A few days ago, I received a nice comment from Daniel Weikert asking me to review the Alterx gallery and to specifically go through the collaborate and share features along with how to use the private studio collections, scheduling, and overall features of the gallery. So I thought I'd run through that here in a short video. I won't be able to cover everything that the gallery does because it's a very deep tool, but I thought at a high level I could go through some of the features that might be of interest to most of you. So I've got the gallery loaded here. It is on an instance, a server that is inside uh, my network. The gallery can be installed on a server that is on the cloud. So you could do it on Amazon Web Services, for example, and have it be accessible there. But this is just running uh, on an on-premise instance here. The gallery comes with the AlterX server. So when you hear the term AlterX server, it's the gallery component is one of those pieces. Some, some setup components I want to talk about specifically. One is around the security piece. Uh, when you install the server, one of the options is to have the gallery integrate with your, uh, your Microsoft uh, security and have it either with Kerberos or without Kerberos or have built-in security to the gallery that's got its own security setting behind the scene. I've opted to have it installed with the Microsoft or the Windows user account. So when I go to this gallery page initially and every time I use it, uh, it doesn't ask me to log in. It just uses my Windows account. Uh, for email purposes, so one of the things you can do with Alteryx Designer is you can publish out workflows that will email people content when it's done. So I could have a workflow that emails out an Excel uh, spreadsheet, for example. When that happens, you'll have to set up a connection inside the, inside the gallery itself to be able to uh, email out notifications from the gallery. Now, if the workflow's got email notifications built into it, that's handled there, uh, but the gallery can do it. I have a separate video about setting up the email uh, within the designer itself. Uh, there's a little bit of a trick you have to do if you are going to use Outlook, uh, specifically Office 365. You have to run it through a relay uh, because of the authentication issues that uh, AlterX Designer can't handle. So side note on that. The other piece about the setup, you can customize and brand the gallery uh, to some extent. It's not fully customizable, but you can get your own colors and logos in there uh, as, part of the, as part of the setup. So I'm at the home page, and this is where your workflows and apps go to by default, unless you publish them with different options. I have a simple app test in here that's an analytic app, so it's got user interface controls behind it. And then there's another app that simply runs as a workflow. There are no uh, questions that are asked when that workflow runs. It just simply runs and uh, has one output uh, when it's completed. So uh, the changes or differences between an analytic app and a workflow are more of a, a more of a designer issue than um, or question than the gallery. So this is where you go to by default. Districts are basically folders. That's about as, as simple as I can make it. Districts don't have any security to them. The, the apps or workflows that show up in a district are set by the tags. So this particular district is called under development. And in, the, in this uh, analytic app, the tag that's set here is called development. And that development tag is associated with this district. And that's why the app shows up here. To create a tag, you have to go into the admin side of gallery, which I'm not going to cover here, to set and create new tags. But the app itself, once the tags have been created, you just click add tags and select where you want, which tags are associated with that particular uh, app or workflow. Again, no security. It's simply to be able to parse out or separate apps into different uh, buckets or groups, in this case, districts. Private Studio is exactly what it sounds like. This is your private folder. There's uh, Nobody else can see this folder. Uh, all of the apps that you publish go here, and uh, you can just think of it as your home studio, and where, where you would go to work with some of the apps. Uh, I'm going to dig back into the app test for a minute and show you the beginnings of what some of the collaborate and share features look like. So f for this example, there this app has been 
published three times. There's three different versions. If I click on the version, I can see the three times I've published it. I can select one of them and run that older version. I can also make the older version the new published version. I can also download that old version and start working with it and making changes to it inside Alteryx Designer. So the gallery ends up becoming your your collaboration space. It's kind of like the way that GitHub or any other version control platform would work. You can simply publish your workflows out here. You can get old versions, you can edit old versions, work with them uh, in that sense. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the way that SharePoint works. You can also run the app from here. We can just download the current version that's published. There's also a schedule button. So if I want this particular app, let's say it publishes or emails out an Excel file and I want to get that file every morning, I can click the schedule button and schedule this workflow to run every morning and send me the results. All right, where it gets really interesting is in the collections piece. So the collections are security and controlled. They are basically their own groups of apps and workflows. And when you click on one of them, I'm going to go into the clinical one, for example, because that's where my app test is. I can go to the users tab here and I can start adding users to this collection and only users that are part of this collection can run that app and I can set specific permissions for each user in here and what they're allowed to do. There are different levels of, of permissions. So if you want to be able to prevent what apps people see, in, in my case, I have some apps that are specifically that only for HR folks that nobody else can see, then only HR staff are assigned to that collection. And those are the only apps, uh, not the only apps that they can see, but it prevents other people from seeing those, those apps. I can go and see old workflow results. I'm not gonna go into that. And here's where I can get a list of all the schedules if I had any running. So let's switch back over to Alteryx Designer and I'll show you the collaboration and share piece from there. So inside the designer, what I have is a sample well, I call it a little more than a sample because it's this Titanic prediction example that I posted another video on that you can see if you want to know how that works. This is a little bit busy of a workflow, but it's it's actually an analytic app, not just a workflow. It's got user interface components in here that I'm uh, assigning to an input node that asks the user for some input before it runs a prediction and kicks out a report when it's done. So from here, uh, let's say I didn't have any any workflow open and I wanted to load one from the gallery. I would just go to the file menu, choose uh, open workflow, and then choose the gallery. Okay, and the gallery will load and it'll list by default all my workflows. If I wanted to just work on only workflows and not analytic apps, I could do that. Uh, macros, simply just a, uh, maybe I would define it as a, as a, a node or a, a smaller workflow that you've set to perform a certain task, a custom task, and you can you can publish those out there as well. So I have that I have that app test out here, and that's what's sitting inside the gallery. Of course, there are versions associated with it, so I can see the versions and load one of the previous versions if that's what I wanted to work with. So what's nice about this is it ends up being your collaborate and share environment from that from that perspective. So uh, that's how I can get apps that I've already developed that are sitting out on the gallery. When I click the save button, once I've opened it, it's gonna save it back to the gallery. It's not saving it locally. So you've got your version control built into there. Uh, if I were to run this app from here, I can run it as an analytic app. And when I do that, I will get the user interface window. Uh, as, as sort of a test so I can see what it looks like. If I go back and look at the, the app in the gallery again, from there what I can do is I can see what it looks like as if it, as if it were going to run, uh, you know, run a normal app and the interface tools and all the stuff that comes with it. So let's go back to my private studio. There's that Titanic prediction. And let's go ahead and run it. I can also click the icon here and run it from there. And you'll see I get the questions as, as a user interface. So I can enter this passenger's name, choose the different classes, they're male or female. There's some spinner controls here for age, uh, more drop downs, and then click run. 
when I when I run that app, it's going to run in the gallery and the output is going to be displayed in the gallery, depending on what I choose to output. Uh, in this case, it's going to display a simple table and an image. And I have options to output that particular display as an Excel spreadsheet, as a PDF, as a Word doc, HTML. There's a lot of different outputs that pop up as part of that app. So what I really like about this is it lets me design a workflow that allows user input and then be able to save that workflow, schedule that workflow, go back and look at it, uh, and then have the user be able to get it out in a different format. So one of the things that sometimes struggle with with, with reporting services uh, and, and to some extent Power BI, where the output doesn't come out uh, in a format that's usable by the end user. So uh, it, it's, it ends up being a very nice tool. So I think that covers most of the things I wanted to talk about. Uh, the homepage, districts, the private studio, how collections and sharing, how collections work, the scheduling component, version control, sharing and collaboration. Uh, I think that covers all of it. So as usual, leave me a comment, drop a like, subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell to get notifications. Uh, let me know if there's anything else that's interesting to you in the analytics gallery. Possibly you want to see what's happening on the admin side and how that all gets set up. I'm happy to do it. Thanks.